This lesson describes the use of the pencil, brush, and eraser tools, and demonstrates a few common scenarios for using this set of tools. So here I have a document open, and I'm going to use some of these tools to demonstrate how they can be used upon the stage. So firstly, we have the pencil tool. And we can see in the properties inspector that pencil tool shows up and we're able to designate a number of things around the fill and stroke. There is no fill to the pencil tool because the pencil tool only draws out a stroke. But we can control all aspects of that stroke, including the color, the width, what the style is, so solid, dashed, etc. We can edit the stroke style. So for instance, here we have a preview of how the stroke would actually look. We can change it to sharp corners if we want. And we can choose other stroke types from this dropdown. So if I use my pencil and I just make a little scribble, we can see that it automatically comes out as a stroke. I can go down and change this to dashed and we see how the dashes work. If I edit dashed, we can see the spacing and the dash. We can actually move these things apart and we get a nice little preview right there for all those things. Let's take that down a bit and we can see how that works. We can also choose dotted ragged, stippled, or hatched. So we have a lot of control over the stroke, width, color, and style using these controls. If using something like solid, we get even more controls. So we're able to define scaling. So if we want to scale normally, when we scale something, it's going to scale both horizontal and vertical, or we can specify each of those, or tell it to not scale at all. We can also provide stroke hints, and basically it tells us right there in the tooltip that it's going to prevent any uh, blurry lines from happening. So you don't really notice it if we zoom in here. You won't notice it so much in authoring, but you can notice it quite a bit when we go into actually viewing the thing and we compile our Swift. That sort of blurriness is more noticeable. We can change the cap from none or to round or square. And that's going to change how the ends of our stroke show up. We can also change the joints, something like round. So if I make the cap round and the join round, and then I draw something like this out. And let's zoom in again and pan over. So we can see it makes a really nice line for us. If we use our selection tool and select that stroke, we can also modify the stroke. So if we make it bigger, we can actually see how that stroke works as far as the cap and so forth. So here is none, so it just cuts it off. And then we have square, which adds a little square cap to the end. And we can also see the join. If we choose miter, it cuts it off. And if we choose bevel, we get that sort of a thing. And if we choose miter, we can actually extend that a certain number of pixels so that it's not cut off at all. So we get this nice zigzag line. Going back to our pencil tool, so zooming back out to 100%, let's actually have a look at the brush tool. So when I toggle the brush tool on, I'm able to select in the properties inspector, no stroke, but only fill color. So let's choose a different color for the fill, maybe this orange yellow color here. And as you see, 
all of these controls that we just went over for pencil are all grayed out. We're not able to actually use any of those. However, we can use smoothing down here. And by default, it's set to 50. And it'll basically try to correct the stroke as we draw it and try to make it smoother or not as smooth. So for instance, if we bring this down to zero and I start drawing something on the pasteboard, and actually let's go in and make this stroke bigger. So let's pull our controls, our tools out here so that we're able to do a bit more with them. I'm gonna dock them up here because from here we can change a lot of the aspects of our brush. So especially the brush size, that's gonna let us draw a nice big stroke. We also have the brush shape that we can change and we can use pressure and tilt. So right now I'm actually using a, a Wacom Intuos 4 as I'm going through these lessons. So this will allow me to vary the width by using pressure. So that was using smoothing of zero here. If I go and pump smoothing all the way up to 100 or close to 100 anyway, we can see how this is gonna differ. So we can see here that what has happened is when we have smoothing down to zero, it more or less just paints wherever we paint. However, if we have smoothing up to 100, it's gonna to try to smooth out any of those lines. And we can see this by choosing the sub selection tool. So here's the lines here for smoothing at zero. And here's all the anchors on these paths for smoothing at 100. So definite differences between these two. This object here that has smoothing at zero is gonna be a lot more intensive as far as rendering goes than something more lightweight like this. Generally though, having brush smoothing set to 50 or around 50 is gonna work just fine. It'll give you that natural flow, but it will also allow for not as many little anchor points. So 50 is a good one to shoot for. So one last look, and that's at the eraser tool. Using the eraser tool, we have a few other options here. We can change the eraser mode from normal, or we can select to only erase fills, only erase lines, only erase selected fills, or erase inside. So some of these are very specific, of course. What I'm gonna do is just use it in its normal, normal mode here. We can also choose faucet, and what faucet does is basically erases an entire object. You can think of it as sort of turning on a faucet and you know, it's just washing all the paint away. But we don't exactly want that. When we use normal mode, you can see it just kind of rips through any of those strokes and fills. And then we also have the shape and size of our eraser. So we can make it very small if we want if we need to do some precision work and so forth. And the eraser is quite useful for cleaning things up as well. So say we drew something like this out, but you know perhaps this tip isn't really what we're looking for. We can just remove that easy enough and clean up any of these kind of straggler pieces here until we have a nice clean design. So this has been a, a lesson describing the pencil, brush, and eraser tools within Flash Professional CS6.